not only are men the ones who are doing the baby trapping, they also pet trap you. Now, I have my own personal story to add to this that I've mentioned before. But what made me think of it is this was in uh, the New York Times, Modern Love. Uh, It's always got amazing nonfiction stories. And this one's pretty heartbreaking. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm just going to point out some major things uh, because I think this happens more than people realize. And that not only do they baby trap you with literally putting a baby in you, but they baby trap you with kids from another marriage. (laughs) It's called, This Is Not the Relationship I Ordered. Divorce left me with a surprising realization about who was the love of my life. Right out of the gate. For years, my husband told me, you're the love of my life. Nothing you do could ever make me leave you. First of all, that is a really weird thing to say to somebody. If my husband was ever being constantly saying things like this, like what? That to me says a setup that he's going to leave you. Like, I swear to God, what men say sometimes, it is so cryptic. It's so telling, like, pay attention. Then he met someone else and it was over. As promised, it was nothing I had done. There we go, right there. It's like he literally set her up to be like, I'm going to leave you, but it's nothing that you're going to (laughs) do. It had been the second marriage for both of us and he had come with young daughters. A daunting prospect for me as someone who had grown up in a difficult family and sworn off children of my own. Okay, first of all... (laughs) sleeps in the weirdest position. I always pay attention to what is not said as much as what is actually said. And so it makes me wonder if he had an affair with her um, and cheated with her and married her. I do not know. We don't know. But I do know that um, this woman who wanted to be child free was now a mother to two children. And I'm going to tag one of my mutuals who I adore Um, she talks a lot about stepmothers and how much stepmothers get screwed because they end up having to parent children that aren't theirs and like more than their, their husbands will, the actual fathers of these children will not parent their own children. And a lot of times the stepmothers end up caring more than the father about his own children. And then, but because they're stepmothers, they don't get any of the rights. They don't get the credit. They don't get, I'm not saying that. All stepmothers are amazing, but I am saying that as somebody who is friends with lots of women who are stepmothers, um, and I saw, you know, my own stepmother really struggle with this position because of how unfair it is and how much it's like two women pitted against each other. Um, I will always have sympathy for stepmothers because a lot of times they end up picking up the slack, whether it's financially or childcare wise or emotional labor or domestic labor or whatever. They end up doing the parenting a lot of times that the father should be doing, but he doesn't want to, which is why I warn you not to date men with children. Um, especially if they're still married, but also just in general, because you will be a stepmom in that y- Sometimes works out okay, but oftentimes does not. So this woman had two cats. Um, and then the, these two children that she now has inherited, um, they ended up wanting their own cat. And she didn't actually want another cat, but she went along with it. So she's got two children she didn't want. And now she's going to have a, a, a pet that she doesn't want because of the girl. But shocker to nobody... Just like the father who's probably making her parent kids that are not hers. Um, she ends up having to take care of this cat, right? Because the, the, the girls go to stay with their mom. She works from home, so the care was left to me. The kid, the cat was like, you know, stuck in the kid's room for a while because it was a shelter kitty and <laughs> had maybe parasites and stuff. So they had to quarantine it from her cat. She had to like feed it, medicate it <laughs> several times a day with a little syringe. Like... A lot of work, okay? Believe it or not, I was kind of shocked. One of my roommates ended up taking in a bunch, like a couple abandoned kitties. And it is like, she had to bottle feed it. Like, these things are work. And guess who the work of taking care of children and pets usually falls on? The woman in the house. Not the man and not his children who wanted this pet to begin with. Now, she really didn't like this cat for a while. She already had a cat, but she was taking care of it. And this whole essay ends up being basically about this cat. And animals in general and not about her marriage really, but it is, it's in the subtext. You know, she's like, ran out of patience. I'd been taking care of this obligation for three people I love. The cat made a lot of noise. It was a lot of work, but she ended up 
you know, falling in love with this cat. I mean, it's hard not to when you're caring for something, especially when it's really fragile. And and then, of course, this paragraph comes. Several years later, my husband persuaded me, a lifelong New Yorker, that we should buy a house in New Jersey. We were there only a few weeks when he told me about a pet adoption event at a local strip mall. Now that we had a yard, he wanted a dog. God, the nerve of this man. So this woman is taking care of a kitten, two children, now a dog, all because of this man. And he had her move away from New York City. Now, somebody, I lived in New York for almost seven years. Lifelong New Yorkers, like... To leave New York City and go live in Jersey is a big deal, especially for a lifelong New Yorker. It is, that to me is really sad because New Yorkers love, I mean, that city is such a pain in the butt. It is so stressful, especially if you don't have money. But New Yorkers love New York for a reason. I cannot imagine. God, what else? Like this man sucks. But, you know, a lot of women get talked into this stuff. And this is, again, the importance of why women need to start centering themselves and what they want. Because this man, she sacrificed so many things that she really didn't want, but she took on because she loved this man. He didn't love her. I, but I, I did not want a dog, but I love my husband, so I went along. She didn't want any of these. She's taking care of four, two pets, two children, and a husband. That is five things that this woman is taking care of. And this is like even worse. From the first, Buddy was my husband's. When we were both home, Buddy stayed with him, even though I was the one who fed the dog and let him out. To Buddy, I was the help. Honey, that's who you are to your husband too. God, I swear. The dog was enormous. He's like over 80 pounds. The the now teenage daughter found his exuberance annoying and barred him from their bedrooms. So the girls aren't taking, the girls are probably not taking care of the cat that they made or adopt either. Look how she just drops this here. In time, the older cat die, cats died. Then my husband moved back to Brooklyn to be with his new girlfriend. His apartment didn't allow pets. Soon enough, his daughters went off to college. Oh, God, he made her, he convinced her, he didn't make her. He didn't make her, but I know we know how men are. They are such liars and they're so convincing. And our social conditioning has taught us to sacrifice, 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 sacrifice. And that is one of the reasons why I do my work is I want women to stop thinking this way because we always get screwed. He gets to go back to New York. He's living in Brooklyn now. The exciting city with his, you know, shiny new toy of a girlfriend. That he, I mean, clearly, I'm guessing this man cheated on his wife to be with her because... It seems as though he gets bored with women who give too much and needs the constant validation. Oh, look at him. Oh, Oh, look at that. Needs constant validation. God, I, I hate this man. But she's stuck in Jersey? A New Yorker in Jersey? God. She's part of the, uh... Bridge and tunnel people now, as the New Yorkers call people in, you know, Jersey and all the other places. I really wish she had given this dog to her husband. Made him take it. Why did you take this dog? Because his apartment with his new girlfriend wouldn't allow dogs? No. The dog didn't even like her. But this is a, this is a, this is a story of women sacrificing and getting screwed. It's a cautionary tale. Please learn the lessons from women sharing their stories because this is what men do all the time. Convince you to have kids you don't want to have, raise kids that aren't yours, get pets that aren't yours, move away, move for them, which is why I always say never move for a man. Leave your community, your culture, your, your neighborhood for them and then he just cheats and leaves and goes back to the place that you wanted to stay to begin with god so she basically ends up moving to connecticut and guess who comes with her buddy the dog and tiger the cat two pets she never wanted now the rest of the essay goes on with her describing how much she actually grew to love both of them even though buddy never actually liked her eventually and this is really sorry spoiler alert the cat ends up dying she's so heartbroken because she's learned to really love this cat the cat is the love of her life okay that's what that did that that's the answer to the premise and then she talks about how buddy still gets excited to hear a man's voice and throws himself at male visitors a constant reminder that he lost the love of his life years ago (laughs) this is the saddest story so i looked up 
this writer, just because I'm always curious, like, you know, if in New York Times, sometimes it's new writers and sometimes it's like very, very uh, accomplished writers who are in modern, modern love section. So I saw this on Medium, the writer behind the stories of the stars. This woman, Elizabeth Klein, is an amazing ghost writer. I mean, she's obviously a very good at, at writing her own stories too, but this is her. The reason why I'm bringing this up is like this, this woman is brilliant, okay? I mean, I just saw some of the stuff she's done and it just makes me so angry that this, that a woman this smart this amazing, this accomplished, like this, we see this all the time, was with such a piece of crap. I can't believe she still had a career because it sounds, I mean, I, she probably would have had even more of a career if she wasn't saddled with kids she didn't want and a bunch of pets. So she ghost writ um, Daryl Hammond's memoir, uh, God, If You're Not Up There, I'm Four, a bunch of others. She was born into a family of like writers and publish, publicists, publishers. Her dad was close friends with James Baldwin and helped him write the classic Notes of a Native Son. Her dad was friends with James Baldwin. She also helped getting the, get this story out and breaking free about the cult leader Warren Jeff's whole thing. Like, I, that's just some of her work. And this man, this is such a classic story. So the reason why I want to also bring this up is that, um, you know, when I was dating that abusive guy, I, I told you all this several times, but I'm, in case you haven't heard this, I got an IUD. I did. I didn't, you know, I was celibate for so long. I didn't have any, I didn't take birth control pills or anything for a really long time. There's really no point. I wasn't, you know, having schmegs enough to even matter. I just used rubbers or whatever. But in my first relationship at the age of 36, I was like, well, crap, um, I should probably get something so that I don't have to worry about this. Um, because I had a feeling that this man would not want to use rubbers. I wish we had because he was soliciting schmegs on Craigslist and cheating on me with so many people. But I can't believe I didn't get an STI, honestly. But when I got, I got an IUD as soon as we started dating. And then I bled an extra four days every month because of the IUD. It was one of the most painful things I've ever endured. And they didn't give me pain medication. And then it fell out, by the way, apparently because of a Diva Cup. And I was, be very careful, okay? Just be very careful if you have Diva Cup and IUD. But at one point in time, my ex literally said to me, dang, I wish you didn't have that IUD. Now I, now I can't knock you up and you can just leave. It was something along those lines. And I just like, I was like, Pfft. because this is a very Melanie style of handling things. I was like, you couldn't trap me with a baby. I just abort that thing anyway. And then like a dummy. Sorry, someone, not a dummy. I'm not a dummy. As someone who gives men the benefit of the doubt and never, ever, 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 ever occurred to me that this man was pure evil and would ever want to trap me. Uh, I underestimated this man constantly. So as someone who is very naive and uh, operating from a lot of unhealed trauma, I was like, yeah, I said, yeah, you can't trap me. I'm just a board anyway. If you really want to trap me, you get a dog. Well... Guess who brought home a puppy, a literal puppy, like days later. So then I'm stuck with this puppy and I'm like, I don't want a dog. Like I have always wanted a dog. That's all I've ever wanted. I've never wanted children. I've always wanted to be child free, just like that author. But I wouldn't even get a dog until I knew I was ready. And even with a husband now who helps, you know, take care of the dog, like we both take care of the dog. I'm not doing it all by myself. He's still like more work than I imagined. Believe it or not. I know it looks like this is all he does all day and he does. But he also is like a mess if I leave the house. So we have to hire babysitters, blah, 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 blah. It is expensive. And it's, uh, you know, he never grows up and he's so big. I can't take him most places. But I love you. I love you. I love you, Moe's. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, anyway, I had to rehome this puppy. Because this man tried to trap me. And every time I talk about this, my comments are full of women who were trapped by pets. And that's exactly what these men do. So I am telling you, do not, do not let these, do not let these men get you pregnant. They are literally doing it to control you and have access to you for the rest of your life. They will never parent those children. And if they do, they'll be a terrible, terrible parent. Probably do not let them convince you to get a dog. Don't let them bring home a dog. Don't let them convince you to get a pet with them. Because then they're going to want to, I can't tell you people have like joint custody with pets. 
Or they just will run off and you're, now you're stuck with a pet. Well, guess what? If I had gotten a dog when I lived in L.A., which I really wanted to get a dog. I was so close to getting a dog. If I had done that, I never would have been able to move to Europe because I didn't have the money to be able to afford to do all the stuff that it requires to move with the dog. I never would have been able to do all the travel that I wanted to do. I literally uprooted my entire life and started a new one, which would it could be done with a pet, but it's very hard. I would have been so screwed if I had gotten a dog the any day before I was ready. And these men will bring home a little kitten and be like, look what I got you. Don't fall for it. Don't, don't let your little empathy or maternal instinct or whatever it is. Do not let that, do not center the safety and needs of an animal over your life. Especially when you didn't even want that animal. And a man did that to trap you. Please, please stop underestimating these men. They are malicious. They are selfish. They are reckless. And they will do anything to extract as much from you as possible and leave you anyway. Not all men, but a lot of them. Don't even let them buy you a plant unless you want to take care of a plant. Men have never been taught to pour into ourselves and take care of ourselves. We are always going to end up taking care of something. Do not let a man force you to take care of anyone, not him or any of the things he brings home because it's all about control and exhausting you. And don't let him convince you that it's for love. That's not what it's about. A man who loved you would never force you to take care of anything that you did not want to take care of. Be careful out there.